This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Adam Jones, London. Aesop's Fables The Pack Ass, the Wild Ass, and the Lion. A wild ass or a pack ass jogging along under a heavy load and taunts him with the condition of slavery in which he lived in these words what a vile lot is yours compared with mine i am free as the air and never do a stroke of work and as for fodder i have only to go to the hills and there i find far more than enough for my needs but you you depend on your master for food and he makes you carry heavy loads every day and beats you unmercifully. At that moment a lion appeared on the scene, and made no attempt to molest the pack-ass owing to the presence of the driver. But he fell upon the wild-ass who had no one to protect him, and without more ado made a meal of him. It is no use being your own master, unless you can stand up for yourself. End of the pack ass, the wild ass, and the lion. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Adam Jones, London. Aesop's Fables, The End. Ants were once men, and made their living by tilling the soil. But, not content with the results of their own work, they were always casting longing eyes upon the crops and fruits of their neighbours, which they stole whenever they got the chance and added to their own store. At last, their covetousness made Jupiter so angry that he changed them into ants. But, though their forms were changed, their nature remained the same. And so, to this day, they go round among the cornfields, and gather the fruits of others' labour, and store them up for their own use. You may punish a thief, but his bent remains. End of the end. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, Please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Adam Jones, London. Aesop's Fables The Frogs and the Well. Two frogs lived together in a marsh. But one hot summer the marsh dried up, and they left it to look for another place to live in, for frogs like damp places if they can get them. By and by they came to a deep well and one of them looked down into it and said to the other, This looks like a nice cool place. Let us jump in and settle here. But the other, who had a wiser head on his shoulders, replied, Not so fast, my friend. Supposing this well dried up like the marsh, how should we get out again? Think twice before you act. End of the Frogs and the Well This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Adam Jones, London. Aesop's Fables The Crab and the Fox A crab once left the seashore and went and settled in a meadow some way inland, which looked very nice and green and seemed likely to be a good place to feed in. But a hungry fox came along and spied the crab and caught him. Just as he was going to be eaten up, the crab said, This is just what I deserve, for I had no business to leave my natural home by the sea and settle here as though I belonged to the land. Be content with your lot. End of the Crab and the Fox This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Curtis Brown, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. 
Aesop's Fables The Fox and the Grasshopper A grasshopper sat chirping in the branches of a tree. A fox heard her, and, thinking, what a dainty morsel she would make, he tried to get her down by a trick. Standing below, in full view of her, he praised her song in the most flattering terms, and begged her to descend, saying he would like to make the acquaintance of the owner of so beautiful a voice. But she was not to be taken in, and replied, "'You are very much mistaken, my dear sir. If you imagine I am going to come down, I keep well out of the way of you and your kind, ever since the day when I saw numbers of grasshoppers' wings strewn about the entrance to a fox's earth. End of The Fox and the Grasshopper This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables the farmer, his boy, and the rooks. A farmer had just sown a field of wheat, and was keeping a careful watch over it, for numbers of rooks and starlings kept continually settling on it, and eating up the grain. Along with him went his boy, carrying a sling, and whenever the farmer asked for the sling, the starlings understood what he said, and warned the rooks, and they were off in a moment. So, the farmer hit on a trick. My lad, said he, we must get the better of these birds somehow. After this, when I want the sling, I won't say sling, but just humph, and you must then hand me the sling quickly. Presently, back came the whole flock. Humph, said the farmer, but the starlings took no notice, and he had time to sling several stones among them, hitting one on the head, another in the legs, and another in the wing before they got out of range. As they made all haste away, they met some cranes, who asked them what the matter was. Matter, said one of the rooks. It's those rascals' men that are the matter. Don't you go near them. They have a way of saying one thing and meaning another, which has just been the death of several of our poor friends. End of The Farmer, His Boy, and the Rooks This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Ass and the Dog An ass and a dog were on their travels together, and, as they went along, they found a sealed packet lying on the ground. The ass picked it up, broke the seal, and found it contained some writing which he proceeded to read out aloud to the dog. As he read on, it turned out to be all about grass and barley and hay, in short, all the kinds of fodder that asses are fond of. The dog was a good deal bored with listening to all this, till at last his impatience got the better of him, and he cried, "'Just skip a few pages, friend, and see if there isn't something about meat and bones.' The ass glanced all through the packet, but found nothing of the sort." and said so. Then the dog said, in disgust, "'Oh, throw it away, do! What's the good of a thing like that?' End of The Ass and the Dog This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables THE ASS CARRYING THE IMAGE A certain man put an image on the back of his ass to take it to one of the temples of the town. As they went along the road, all the people they met uncovered and bowed their heads out of reverence for the image, but the ass thought they were doing it out of respect for himself, and began to give himself airs accordingly. At last he became so conceited that he imagined he could do as he liked, and, by way of protest against the load he was carrying, he came to a full stop and flatly declined to proceed any further. His driver, finding him so obstinate, hit him hard and long with his stick, saying the while, "'Oh, you dunder-headed idiot! Do you suppose it's come to this, that men pay worship to an ass?' Rude shocks await those who take to themselves the credit that is due to others." 
End of The Ass Carrying the Image This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Aaron Hockwimmer in Auckland, New Zealand. Aesop's Fables, The Athenian and the Theban An Athenian and a Theban were on the road together, and passed the time in conversation, as is the way of travellers. After discussing a variety of subjects, they began to talk about heroes, a topic that tends to be more fertile than edifying. Each of them was lavish in his praises of the heroes of his own city, until eventually the Theban asserted that Hercules was the greatest hero who had ever lived on earth, and now occupied a foremost place among the gods, while the Athenian insisted that Theseus was far superior for his fortune had been in every way supremely blessed, whereas Hercules had at one time been forced to act as a servant. And he gained his point, for he was a very glib fellow, like all Athenians. So that the Theban, who was no match for him in talking, cried at last in some disgust, All right, have your way. I only hope that, when a hero is angry with us, Athens may suffer from the anger of Hercules, and Thebes only from that of Theseus. End of The Athenian and the Theban from Aesop's Fables. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Marian Margitich, Hungary. Aesop's Fables The Goat Herd and the Goat. A goat herd was one day gathering his flock to return to the fold, when one of his goats strayed and refused to join the rest. He tried for a long time to get her to return by calling and whistling to her, but the goat took no notice of him at all. So at last he threw a stone at her and broke one of her horns. In dismay he begged her not to tell his master, but she replied, you silly fellow, my horn will cry aloud even if I had my tongue. It's no use trying to hide what can't be hidden. End of the Goat Herd and the Goat This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Marian Margitich, Hungary. The Sheep and the Dog Once upon a time the sheep complained to the shepherd about the difference in his treatment of themselves and his dog. Your conduct, said they, is very strange, and we think very unfair. We provide you with wool and lambs and milk, and you give us nothing but grass, and even that we have to find for ourselves. But you get nothing at all from the dog, and yet you feed him with tidbits from your own table. Their remarks were overheard by the dog, who spoke up at once and said, Yes, and quite right too. Where would you be if it wasn't for me? Thieves would steal you. Wolves would eat you. Indeed, if I didn't keep constant watch over you, you would be too terrified even to graze. The sheep were obliged to acknowledge that he spoke the truth, and never again made a grievance of the regard in which he was held by his master. End of the Sheep and the Dog This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Aaron Hockwimmer, Auckland, New Zealand. Aesop's Fables, The Shepherd and the Wolf A shepherd found a wolf's cub straying in the pastures, and took him home and read him along with his dogs. When the cub grew to his full size, if ever a wolf stole a sheep from the flock, he used to join the dogs in hunting him down. 
It sometimes happened that the dogs failed to come up with the thief and, abandoning the pursuit, returned home. The wolf would on such occasions continue the chase by himself and, when he overtook the culprit, would stop and share the feast with him and then return to the shepherd. But if some time passed without a sheep being carried off by the wolves, he would steal one himself and share his plunder with the dogs. The shepherd's suspicions were aroused, and one day he caught him in the act, and, fastening a rope around his neck, hung him on the nearest tree. What's bred in the bone is sure to come out in the flesh. End of Aesop's Fables, The Shepherd and the Wolf This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Bronwyn Gannon, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Aesop's Fables, Volume 9. Fable 13. The Lion, Jupiter, and the Elephant. The lion, for his size and strength, and his sharp teeth and claws, is a coward in one thing. He can't bear the sound of a cock crowing, and runs away whenever he hears it. He complained bitterly to Jupiter for making him like that. But Jupiter said that it wasn't his fault. He, would, he had done the best he could for him, and considering that this was his only failing, he ought to be well content. The lion, however, wouldn't be comforted, and was so ashamed of his timidity that he thought he might die. In this state of mind he met the elephant, and had a talk with him. He noticed that the great beast cocked up his ears all the time, as if he were listening for something, and he asked him why he did so. Just then a gnat came humming by, and the elephant said, do you see that wretched little buzzing insect? I'm terribly afraid of its getting to my ear. If it once gets in, I'm dead and done for. The lion's spirits rose at once when he heard this. For, he said to himself, if the elephant, huge as he is, is afraid of a gnat, I needn't be so much ashamed of being afraid of a cock, who is ten thousand times bigger than a gnat. The End of The Lion, Jupiter and the Elephant This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Pig and the Sheep A pig found his way into a meadow, where a flock of sheep were grazing. The shepherd caught him, and was proceeding to carry him off to the butcher's, when he set up a loud squealing, and struggled to get free. The sheep rebuked him for making such a to-do, and said to him, The shepherd catches us regularly, and drags us off just like that, and we don't make any fuss. No, I dare say not, replied the pig, but my case and yours are altogether different. He only wants you for wool, but he wants me for bacon. End of the pig and the sheep. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Gardener and His Dog a gardener's dog fell into a deep well from which his master used to draw water for the plants in his garden with a rope and a bucket. Failing to get the dog out by means of these, the gardener went down into the well himself in order to fetch him up. But the dog thought he had come to make sure of drowning him, so he bit his master as soon as he came within reach, and hurt him a good deal, with the result that he left the dog to his fate and climbed out of the well, remarking, it serves me quite right for trying to save so determined a suicide. End of The Gardener and His Dog This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables the rivers and the sea. Once upon a time, all the rivers combined to protest against the action of the sea in making their waters salt. When we come to you, said they to the sea, we are sweet and drinkable. But when once we have mingled with you, our waters become as briny and unpalatable as your own. 
The sea replied shortly, Keep away from me, and you'll remain sweet. End of the Rivers and the Sea This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Roman Gannon, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. The Lion in Love A lion fell deeply in love with the daughter of a cottager and wanted to marry her, but her father was unwilling to give her to so fearsome a husband, and yet didn't want to offend the lion, so he hit on the following expedient. He went to the lion and said, I think you will make a very good husband for my daughter, but I cannot consent to your union unless you let me draw your teeth and pare your nails, for my daughter is terribly afraid of them. The lion was so much in love that he readily agreed that this should be done. When once, however, he was thus disarmed, the cottager was afraid of him no longer, but drove him away with, with his club. The end of the lion in love. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Marian Margitich, Hungary. The Beekeeper A thief found his way into an apiary when the beekeeper was away and stole all the honey. When the keeper returned and found the hives empty, he was very much upset and stood staring at them for some time. Before long, the bees came back from gathering honey and, finding their hives overturned and the keeper standing by, they made for him with their stings. At this he fell into a passion and cried, You ungrateful scoundrels! You let the thief who stole my honey get off scot-free, and then you go and sting me, who have always taken such care of you. When you hit back, make sure you have got the right man. End of the Beekeeper This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Bronwyn Gannon, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. The Wolf and the Horse A wolf on his rambles came to a field of oats, but not being able to eat them, he was passing on his way when a horse came along. Look, said the wolf, here's a fine field of oats. For your sake I have left it untouched, and I shall greatly enjoy the sound of your teeth munching the ripe grain. But the horse replied, If wolves could eat oats, my fine friend, you would hardly have indulged your ears at the cost of your belly. There is no virtue in giving to others what is useless to oneself. The end of the wolf and the horse. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Adam Jones, London. Aesop's Fables The Bat, the Bramble and the Seagull A bat, a bramble and a seagull went into partnership and determined to go on a trading voyage together. The bat borrowed a sum of money for his venture. The bramble laid in a stock of clothes of various kinds, and the seagull took a quantity of lead, and so they set out. By and by a great storm came on, and their boat with all the cargo went to the bottom, but the three travellers managed to get to land. Ever since then the seagull flies to and fro over the sea, and every now and then dives below the surface looking for the lead he's lost, while the bat is so afraid of meeting his creditors that he hides away by day, and only comes out at night to feed, and the bramble catches hold of the clothes of every one who passes by, hoping some day to recognize and recover the lost garments. All men are more concerned to recover what they lose than to acquire what they lack. End of the Bat, the Bramble, and the Seagull This is a LibriVox recording. 
All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Aaron Hockwimmer in Auckland, New Zealand. Aesop's Fables, The Dog and the Wolf A dog was lying in the sun before a farmyard gate when a wolf pounced upon him and was just going to eat him up, but he begged for his life and said, You see how thin I am and what a wretched meal I should make you now. But if you'll only wait a few days, my master is going to give a feast. All the rich scraps and pickings will fall to me, and I shall get nice and fat. Then will be the time for you to eat me. The wolf thought this was a very good plan, and went away. Some time afterwards he came to the farmyard again, and found the dog lying out of reach on the stable roof. Come down, he called, and be eaten. You remember our agreement? But the dog said coolly, My friend, if you ever catch me lying down by the gate there again, don't you wait for any feast. Once bitten, twice shy. End of Aesop's Fables, The Dog and the Wolf This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recorded by Bronwyn Gannon, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia The Wasp and the Snake a wasp settled on the head of the snake, and not only stung him several times, but clung obstinately to the head of his victim. Maddened with pain, the snake tried every means he could think of to get rid of the creature, but without success. At last he became desperate, and crying, Kill you, I will, even at the cost of my own life, he laid his head with a wasp of it under the wheel of a passing wagon, and they both perished together. End of The Wasp and the Snake this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Bronwyn Gannon, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. The Eagle and the Beetle An eagle was chasing a hare which was running for dear life and was at her wit's end to know where to turn for help. Presently she espied a beetle and begged it to aid her. So when the eagle came up, the beetle warned her not to touch the hare, which was under its protection. But the eagle never noticed the beetle because it was so small, seized the hare and ate her up. The beetle never forgot this and used to keep an eye on the eagle's nest. And whenever the eagle laid an egg, he climbed up and rolled it out of the nest and broke it. But at last the eagle got so worried over the loss of her eggs that she went up to Jupiter, who is the special protector of eagles, and begged him to give her a safe place to nest in, so he let her lay her eggs in his lap. But the beetle noticed this, and made a ball of dirt the size of an eagle's egg, and flew up and deposited it into Jupiter's lap. When Jupiter saw the dirt, he stood up to shake it out of his robe, and, forgetting about the eggs, he shook them out too, and they were broken just as before. Ever since then, they say, eagles never lay their eggs at the season when beetles are about. The weak will sometimes find ways to avenge an insult, even upon the strong. End of The Eagle and the Beetle This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Aaron Hockwimmer in Auckland, New Zealand. Aesop's Fables, The Fowler and the Lark a fowler was setting his nets for little birds when a lark came up to him and asked him what he was doing. I am engaged in founding a city, said he, and with that he withdrew to a short distance and concealed himself. The lark examined the nets with great curiosity and presently, catching sight of the bait, hopped onto them in order to secure it and became entangled in the meshes. The fowler then ran up quickly and captured her. What a fool I was, said she, but at any rate... If that's the kind of city you are founding, it'll be a long time before you find fools enough to fill it. End of The Fowler and the Lark from Aesop's Fables This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Marian Margdic, Hungary. The Fisherman Piping a fisherman who could play the flute 
went down one day to the seashore with his nets and his flute, and taking his stand on a projecting rock, began to play a tune, thinking that the music would bring the fish jumping out of the sea. He went on playing for some time, but not a fish appeared. So at last he threw down his flute and cast his net into the sea, and made a great haul of fish. When they were landed and he saw them leaping about on the shore, he cried, "You rascals! You wouldn't dance when I piped, but now I've stopped. You can do nothing else." End of the fisherman piping.